We're making a MIDI playable polyphonic synth in this video with techniques that you can utilize to make any synth sound. The one we're making today is going to look like this and sound like this. You can build a patch with me through this video or you can download it at the patch storage link in the description or as part of my patch collection which you can find for free on my Kofi page. I'm using a MIDI keyboard, this is the Keystation 88, but you can use any MIDI instrument for this. You can even use your QWERTY keyboard if you like, but it won't have velocity sensitivity. Before we open VCV Rack, make sure that your MIDI controller is turned on so that it will be recognized. To utilize a MIDI controller, we're going to need a MIDI to control voltage module. ASLA, which stands for Advanced Linux Sound Architecture, is appropriate for this first line on mine since I'm running Linux, but yours may say Windows MIDI and is likely preset to the correct input. We're going to find our MIDI controller in this line and select it. And now we're hot. Activating keys, buttons, and knobs on our MIDI controller will send control voltage to our VCV rack. Next, let's get a basic voice going. I'm going to bring in an envelope generator, a voltage-controlled amplifier, and a voltage-controlled oscillator. If you want a polyphonic synth, meaning you can play multiple notes at once, then you have to make sure that the VCO you choose has polyphonic capabilities. I'm going to use the stock VCO, but I'd like to encourage you to experiment with other VCOs as well. You can find ones with polyphony by using the tag polyphonic in the module menu like this. We're going to need the audio module as well so that we can hear ourselves. Select your audio output device on the audio module, and for me that's headphones. Right click on the MIDI to CV module and set the polyphony. I usually don't play more than 8 notes, but feel free to put it at 16 if you want to play your keyboard with your fingers and toes at the same time. The volt per octave output from the MIDI module goes to the volt per octave input of the VCO. Next, the gate output goes to the gate input of the ADSR, and the envelope goes to the voltage-controlled amplifier's control voltage input, which is this one here. It isn't labeled, but if you hover over it, you can see the name. I'm choosing the sine wave output from the VCO, and that goes into the input of the VCA. We should now have an extremely basic polyphonic voice that follows the envelope, and sure enough, we do. I'm going to mess with the envelope a little bit. Here are the settings that I chose. I just lowered the attack and decay a little and raised the sustain. Now let's add some reverb. This is an extremely popular reverb called Plateau by Valley. I did a video on it if you want to check it out. I want to aux it in, which means I want to plug it into the auxiliary input of a mixer. That way we can control the amount of reverb on multiple channels of the mixer while only using one reverb effect module. I'm going to bring in the Mixmaster Junior and Auxbander Junior, as well as the Plateau, and set them next to each other like this so they look pretty. If the Auxbander Junior is in proximity to the mixer, then they automatically interact, no cables needed. Let's plug the VCO into the mixer by using the output from the VCA we created and connect the main outputs to the audio module. Now let's aux in the plateau by connecting the ins and outs to channel A like this. When you aux in an effect, it's important that you only allow wet signal so that you don't increase the dry signal on the channel. To do that, we turn the dry all the way down on the plateau and the wet all the way up. Now if we twist this little knob here, we have reverb. I just want a little bit, but you should dial it to your own personal tastes. This is sounding pretty good so far. Now let's give this bad voice some velocity sensitivity, which is super easy. We could do that by duplicating the first VCA we brought in. You just do that by hovering over it and pressing Ctrl D. Now take the output from the first VCA and feed it to the input of the second. The second VCA's output now goes to the mixer. Now let's feed the velocity parameter from our MIDI module to the second VCA control voltage port and boom, velocity sensitivity baby. Sine waves are cool and all, but they can be kind of bland. I'm going to add a wave manipulator and a filter to spice it up a bit. Let's bring in Debriatus and Tangents by Volt. Debriatus is a wave manipulator, which we'll use to turn this basic sine wave into something with some character. 
Incorporating kinks and bends into the wave adds harmonic content, and we like the sound of that. Tangents is a filter, and we're going to use it to cut out the highest frequencies that can sound shrill to our ears. We'll connect the sine wave output directly into Debriatus through the left input, and the left output will go into Tangents low pass filter input. The output will now go into the first VCA. Now we can manipulate the parameters to get different sounds. I'm going to add a scope too so we can see what the waves look like as we manipulate it. The output from the second VCA goes into the scope, and the scope output goes into the mixer. Easy as that. Turn gain 1 up 2 ticks and the time knob to about 3 quarters, and flick trig on. Now when we play we can see the wave, and here's how it sounds and looks when we start altering the wave with the volt modules. This is where I'd like to encourage you to be super experimental. Debriatus will add harmonic content and tangents will take it away. As an example, let's turn the cutoff on tangents all the way up. This will let nearly all of the harmonic content through the filter. Now let's crush the signal with the second knob here on Debriatus. As we get to the 3 quarters mark it begins to sound too much for my ears, so I'm going to use the low pass filter to cut the highest frequencies by turning tangents down a bit. Now it still has some buzz but not annoyingly. It's pleasantly buzzy like a tuned bumblebee. I have a mod wheel on my keyboard and I want it to control a Leslie speaker type effect which is a sick panning sound that I really like. Let's bring in another VCA, I'm going to duplicate this one with Control D, and a low frequency oscillator. I'm going to plug the sine wave from the LFO into the VCA input and the output goes to the P port of channel 1 on the mixer, which stands for pan. Now on the LFO let's click the offset button to the off position and dial back the VCA. Now it pans back and forth as we can see on the mixer, but I want my mod wheel to control it so I'm going to take the MW output and plug it into the CV input of the VCA. Now as I turn up the VCA with my mod wheel it increases the panning depth. I want to increase the frequency a little of the LFO so it pans a little faster and here's how it sounds. Lastly, for this video, we're going to add a subtle noise voice when a key's pressed. I really like this, but honestly, you could leave it out and it'll still sound good. All we need is a noise source, an ADSR, and a VCA. I like red noise because it has a warm quality to it. That gets plugged into the VCA input. The gate output from our MIDI control goes to the ADSR gate input, just like on our last ADSR, and the envelope goes to the VCA's control voltage input. Lastly, the output goes to mixer channel 2. Let's turn it way down. If you right click on the slider, you can input a value. This works for all parameters and can be super useful. I'm going to put negative 60 dB. Let's turn the attack down, bring the decay back, and turn the sustain and release all the way down on the ADSR. Now when we press a key, there is a very subtle noise sound, kind of like playing an acoustic instrument. I'm going to throw in some blanks to square this up. The stock blank can be stretched by dragging the side like this. And here's the final thing. Looks and sounds fabulous. We'll expand on this synth in a future video, so keep it in your back pocket. That's all for this one. If you like this kind of stuff, you can let me know that by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I'd like to take a moment to shout out two supporters that donated to my Ko-fi page. Crusader General, first supporter ever. Thank you so much, dude. And Zach Hoy, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If y'all are watching this, I'm air high-fiving you right now. Just as a reminder, all of my content is free for everyone. So if you like free stuff, head over to my Ko-fi page and download anything you like. I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.